Hi, welcome to Chapter 5 Solutions. Today's tip of the day is simple. Exercise does a body good and does your mood good. So, you can do whatever you want for exercise. It can be as simple as a little dance. I feel better already. I really do. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Um, hop right in with number one. Number one says if x squared y equals y squared x, and x is greater than y, which of the following could be true? Okay, so for a, could a be true? x equals zero. a is true because you'll notice if x is zero, multiplying by zero is gonna make this whole side zero. And if x is zero over here, you'll be multiplying y squared by zero, so this whole side will also be zero. So a is true. B is true for the same reason. If y is zero, you're multiplying zero by x squared, and here you're multiplying zero by x, so both sides end up being zero. The next ones are a bit more complicated. So, um, C says x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero, so we are looking at both sides being positive. So what we can do here is try to rewrite this so we can get a clear idea of what's going on. So in this case, I'm going to suggest that we solve for x, okay? So we have x squared y equals y squared x. If I divide both sides by y, we get rid of the y over here. We get x squared equals yx because this y squared divided by y is simply y. Remember that when we're dividing by um, variables with exponents, we simply subtract the exponents. So we end up getting y to the first in the numerator. Okay? Now we're going to divide both sides by x. We end up getting x equals y. Okay? This would be fine except for it um, does not satisfy the condition that x has to be greater than y. Since x has to be greater than y, it can't equal y, therefore c is not true. Okay? Now we're going to look at d. D says that x has to equal the opposite of y, okay? Here, um, we know, actually over here, it says x is greater than y. So if x has to equal the opposite of y, we know that x is positive, and y would be the negative one, because one number has to be positive and one number has to be negative. And since x is greater, x has to be the positive and y has to be the negative, okay? So, what you'll notice is that this side of the equation would be negative because x squared would be positive and y would be negative. And a positive times a negative is negative. Over here, this side will be positive because y is negative, but a negative squared is positive times x, which is also positive. So here, the right side is positive and the left side is negative, so they can't be equal. Um, under those circumstances. So D is not true. Okay? Now E, given the way we set up D, is actually the exact same thing as D. It says X is greater than and Y is less than zero. So for the same reason that D is not true, E cannot be true. Because if X is greater than zero and Y is less than zero, the left side is negative and the right side is positive. Okay? So E is not true. So the answer is A and B only for number one. Number two. Number two asks us to simplify the following expression. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is factor your numerator and denominator and look for the common factors because the common factors will cancel out. So let's start with this numerator. There are actually two things we can do with the numerator. So the first thing you always want to do is see if there's a common factor that we can factor out. So what's the greatest common factor here? And you'll see that every term has an x. So we can go ahead and factor that x out. So we're left with x squared minus 3x plus 2 in our numerator. Our denominator, you will hopefully notice, is the difference of squares. Difference because we're subtracting and squared because both the first and second terms are perfect squares. So that factors into x minus 2 times x plus 2. Okay? So far you'll notice that there's nothing in common that we can cross out. But as I mentioned, there are actually um, two steps to simplifying or factoring the numerator, okay? 
So you'll notice that this is a quadratic equation. So what we can do is make sure we bring down that x, but then let's factor um, x squared minus 3x plus 2. So to remind you, we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give us 2 and add together to give us negative 3. Since our middle term is negative and our last term is positive, both of those numbers must be negative because a negative plus a negative will make this negative, but the negative times a negative will make this positive. Okay? So to get a positive 2, we need a minus 1 and a minus 2. So you'll notice that this product is positive 2, and the sum of these two numbers is negative 3. Okay? So that's our new numerator, or our rewritten numerator, over the denominator that we already factored. So let me separate this for you guys visually. Okay? So now you'll see that we can cross out the x minus 2's, and then we are left with x times the quantity x minus 1 divided by x plus 2. Okay? So the answer here is b. Okay, number 3 asks us for the value of 1 over x plus x, that quantity squared, if x squared equals 7. So one clue here is that they tell us what x squared equals, not what x equals. So if we expand this, we are going to get it in terms of x squareds, and all we have to do whenever we have an x squared is substitute in the 7. Okay? So here is the common mistake. First I'm going to show you the common mistake. You square the first term and square the second term, and that's it. So you get 1 over x squared plus x squared. Okay? This is not correct. So if you got 1 7th plus 7, that's not right. What you need to do, if you're not sure how to just look at it, is to expand it. Rewrite this. 1 over x plus x, all squared, means 1 over x plus x times 1 over x plus x. This will remind you that you need to FOIL your answer, and you'll actually get three terms instead of two once you simplify. Okay? So 1 over x times 1 over x is indeed 1 over x squared, plus your outside terms. Notice that these two terms are reciprocals of one another. A number times its reciprocal is always 1. If you don't remember that, however, you can put the x over 1 and multiply your numerators over your multiplied denominators, you'll get x over x, which is 1. Okay, those are your outside terms. And your inside terms, same thing. These numbers are reciprocals of each other, so that's another 1. And then finally, x times x is x squared. Okay, so x squared equals 7, so that's 1 over 7 plus 1 plus 1 plus x squared again is 7. Okay, so here you get 9 and 1 7 as your answer. You are instructed to write your answer as a fraction. So in order to convert this mixed number into a fraction, you take your integer times your denominator, which is 63, you add your numerator, which is 64, so your new numerator is 64 over the 7. So the answer is 64 over 7. Number 4. Number 4 asks us for the value of 3x to the negative 4th, given that 4x squared equals 12. So here is our complete equation over here. So we can solve for x and then plug that value in over here. So the first thing I'm going to do though is rewrite this because I don't like working with that negative exponent. So 3x raised to the negative fourth is simply 3 divided by x to the fourth. Okay? 3 divided by x to the fourth. 4x squared equals 12. To figure out what x squared is, we divide both sides by 4 and we get that x squared equals 3. In order to figure out what x is, you have to take the square root of both sides. So if x squared equals 3, to undo a square, we have to take the square root. Because squares and square roots are inverse operations. So if you take the square root of the left side, you have to take the square root of the right side. When you take square roots, don't forget to make the right side plus or minus. Because we don't know what the underlying value of x is. 
Once you square a number, the original number could have been negative. Once you square it, it's going to be positive. So squaring a number masks the underlying sign. Okay? So x in this case is either positive the square root of 3 or negative the square root of 3. Okay? So we will start out with positive square root of 3 when we plug it in here. It turns out that if we plugged in the negative, we would get the same thing because we're raising it to an even power. So in this case, it actually doesn't matter whether the square root of 3 is positive or negative. So let's just take the positive version and leave it at that. Okay? So this is 3 divided by the square root of 3 raised to the fourth power. So, you might be able to just look and tell what the answer is, but the square root of 3 raised to the fourth means the square root of 3 multiplied by itself four times. So the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is just 3. So this is 3, and then this is also going to be just 3. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is just 3. So notice the square root times itself is just that underlying number. So 3 times 3 is 9. So we get 3 divided by 9, which is simply 1 third. So our answer here for number 4 is 1 third. Number 5. Number 5 is a quantitative comparison question. So we are to compare um, the quantity x plus 3 cubed to x plus 2 times x plus 3 times x plus 4. Note here that they tell us that x is greater than 0. So remember for quantitative comparison, the goal is to compare, not necessarily to calculate the answers. So we want our two problems to be as similar as possible in form. So it's easiest to multiply or expand out the x plus 3 cubed. x plus 3 cubed means x plus 3 times itself three total times. Now you'll see that quantity A looks very similar to quantity B. Now, one thing that we can do is, since we have an x plus 3 on both sides, is to get rid of the x plus 3 on both sides. Because it's like we divided this side by x plus 3, and we divided this side by x plus 3, and that's completely allowable. We also know that x is greater than 0, so we're not worried about dividing by a zero in, in any um, way. Okay, so now we have x plus 3 times x plus 3 versus x plus 2 times x plus 4. This um, makes it seem possibly like the two columns are the same because we have a 3 and a 3 here and 2 plus 4 gives us 6. So it looks like we have 6 and 6 and they could possibly be equal. Okay, but we don't want to just assume that. So what we can do is FOIL our answers together and that will give us a better idea of what each one is. Okay, so x plus 3 times x plus 3 is going to be x squared plus 3x for the outside plus another 3x for the inside plus 9 for the last. That is x squared plus 6x plus 9. Over here if we FOIL we get x squared plus 4x on the outside and 2x on the inside. So I'm just going to go ahead and combine them now and put 6x plus 8. Okay? You'll notice that this part and this part is the same. So the only difference is this 9 and this 8. Therefore, quantity A is bigger. Okay? So A is the answer. If you didn't think to go through and unfactor these, that is fine. Once you get to this point then, you would have to choose values for x and you would consistently see that this column is larger. So you can plug in 1 over here. So 1 plus 3 is 4. 1 plus 3 is 4. So this side would be 16 when you multiply it together. And over here, 1 plus 2 is 3 and 1 plus 4 is 5. So 3 times 5 gives you 15. Okay? Now that's just one example. So you want to be really confident and then go ahead and choose other numbers. You might make x 10 or 100. As long as you keep it positive, then you're in good shape. Okay? If you see it enough times that this side is bigger, then you can be confident that the answer is A, that quantity A will always be bigger. Okay? Now that concludes Chapter 5 Solutions. So go to your official guide, do the associated problems, and move on to Chapter 6. Good luck!